Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing Night Watching, written by Tracy Sierra. It's a thriller. I think this is a great book. It's amazing. There's so much to love about this story. It's twisty, it's tense, it's chilling, it's gripping. There are so many things going on in this story. It feels like a simple plot, but it's so well told. Everything about it keeps you guessing. There's doubt, there's confusion, there are characters that are second guessing themselves. There's so many things going on in this book. I think a lot of readers will love this story. So in this book you find out quite quickly that characters are not given names. Now it felt odd to me early on in the story. And after I read this book, I had a look at a couple of reviews and some people were complaining about it. They wanted names for the characters. And I kind of thought it was strange at the start of the book when I was reading it. But as I read more, and then especially at the end when I thought about the book more, I realised it's a great choice. So without names, the characters, and I do mean all of them, every character in this story doesn't have a name. Every character feels more personal because of that. It feels like they're you, or they're somebody you know, or somebody in your family. They're personal to you because there's no names. You think of them as who they are. A mother, the child, the intruder, the neighbour, the police officer, they've everything in the story, different characters, you think of them as who they are, not their name. So it's more personal to you, it makes everything just more chilling and more effective because it's so personal when you read this story. A great choice to not have names in this book. So I'm not going to describe the plot in great detail, I'll just set up what it is at the start of the book because I don't want to give anything away, because there's so many twists in this story, and some of them happen quite early. So at the start of this book, so the setup for the story, is the mother in this household, she wakes up. It's her and her two children in the house, and her children I think are about three or four, I think the boy is, and the girl may be around seven or eight. So she wakes up, she thinks she hears a noise, could be her son wanting a drink of water or something. Could be her daughter. Her daughter apparently sleepwalks. But it's not. When she's in her doorway, her bedroom doorway, she looks in the hallway and the stairway, and she sees a shape. Quite a large shape. It has to be an adult. But her husband isn't home. So who could it be? She's frozen, and she's just fearful. And it's all internal monologues, even though it's not in the first person, this book. We get her thoughts, and they're very powerful thoughts and very tense and chilling. It's not going to tell you everything that happens in that first setup scene, but what happens a little bit later on in that house scene is she grabs her kids and they escape to this small hidden room in the house. And those scenes are brilliantly told. They're just wonderful. While they're in this small room, they're, they're kind of cut off from the rest of the house. And this intruder is stomping around the house trying to find them. They hear him, they hear what he's saying, they hear his movements, and what he's saying is quite creepy, quite chilling, and very gripping. And you get that sense of dread and fear from the characters, the three characters, two children and the mother, their dread and their fear is so strong in those scenes. That's where I'm going to leave the plot in general, because I don't want to give anything away from that moment. You want to read this to find out, and if you like thrillers, if you like really tense thrillers, thrillers that are psychological in nature as well, thrillers that have doubt in there, they have so much doubt and confusion with some of the characters in this book. They're well told, it's so well structured, there are so many twists and turns going on in this story. I really enjoyed this a lot. Now just the structure of the book. The structure is mostly present narrative, but there is a few past chapters, like past narrative chapters in this story. Those past chapters do lay some of the groundwork for the present day. And I like the way it's structured. The past chapters are just peppered lightly through the story. Sometimes they feel a bit long, so sometimes I felt they could have been shortened, made sharper, because there were a couple of moments where I think just the tension was just decreased a little bit, because those past chapters may have been a bit long in certain points in the book. But the past chapters do add a lot of detail, necessary detail, to the story. And they're quite chilling and creepy in their own right as well, in a different way. Not as tense as a present narrative, but they just have a little background kind of 
tension, a background suspense, a chill factor sometimes in those past scenes. So I do enjoy that a lot in this book. One other thing that was a bit of a negative for me in this story is the children. So the children felt a bit older than their years. And I think a lot of authors just don't age their children right because they want these young children to add tension suspense because they want that kind of parent survival instinct maybe, protective instinct to come in the story. But it just felt like these children should have been a bit older in the story. They should have been aged older to suit what they were doing in the story because they just felt too well behaved. They were too well behaved in those moments where everything was going on that was fearful and tense, where there was chilling and frightening for them. I just felt those children should have been a bit more loose maybe in their reactions. They were too contained, too calm, and they just obeyed the mother too easily, I think, in the book. So I think there was a bit of a letdown in the story. Not a huge letdown, but a bit of a letdown for me when I read this, because it just made those two characters feel a little bit less real to me in the book. But I will say it again, this book is well written, well structured, it's so twisty, there are so many surprises, there's just so much happening in this story. And again, it seems like the plot is just simple, right? So you've got this intruder coming into a house and a mother and two children are trying to survive. It just feels like that's going to be what the book's about, but it's not. There's so much more to come in this story. It's surprising. Things will shock you. Things will just kind of make you just gasp maybe when you read this book. There's so much to love in this story. It's very well told pretty well controlled. I think the debut book was well for the author, and for a debut book, I think it's just brilliant. The mother character in this story, and of course, no name for the character. Very well written, well constructed, a brilliant character in this story. What I like about her is her emotional range. It feels very real, very true, and makes her feel so well rounded. She feels like a real person. Because she has no name, it feels like you know her. She's just more personal to you. So I like that effect it has in the story as well. Her reactions, her dialogue, everything about her just screams a real person. So well written, I just wonder how much care was taken to create the character. Was she written just very quickly? Was she thought about a lot? I'm not sure. I'd like to find out actually because this character feels so real in every situation. I like her doubt and confusion with things that happen in the story. I like the way she just reacts to other people in the book as well. Everything about her in this book feels so real. The intruder, and of course, no name for the intruder either. It makes him feel more creepy because you could be in your house. With no name, it's very personal as well. He's so creepy, he's so chilling. You learn things about him in the story, but... Those first scenes with him, when he's stomping around the house, they're so frightening, very creepy. It will send a shiver down your spine, especially with his dialogue, because he says things. I won't tell you what he says, or I might even give you a hint of what he says, but it's very creepy, very chilling. It just makes you just cringe a bit when he's stomping around and talking. Very well written, very frightening, a great, a great villain, I guess, in this story. And I like at the start of the book because we don't really see him clearly. It's dark in the house. We see glimpses of what he's wearing sometimes. His shoes, I think, and maybe a pattern on his t-shirt. We don't see him. The mother hears his voice and the children hear his voice. There's something about his voice that may be familiar to them. But we don't see him. That's even more frightening, I think, because when you've got a villain that's stomping around, that's dangerous, you don't see him. Who could he be? It makes you guess. It makes you wonder all through the story. This book is so well written, so well structured, so well thought out and planned. It's almost perfect. I rate it a 4.5 out of 5. The reason I rate this a 4.5, not a 5, is for the two things I explained earlier in the video. Some of those past narrative chapters were a bit too long. And it took away some of the tension from the present narrative. That present narrative tension was just brilliant. I wanted that to stay right through the story. I mean, those past narrative chapters felt like they were kind of intruding a little bit in that tension and taking it away a little bit. That was a bit of an impact on me, negative impact. And the second thing is the children characters. They're a certain age in the story, but they're written to be older than that in the book. So that was strange to me. If you're going to write them to be a bit older in their behavior, just age them a bit in the story. 
make more sense that way. So for those two reasons, it's a 4.5 out of 5 and not a 5. On my channel, I review many thrillers. If you enjoy thrillers, check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to a video for another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.